faith. Okay, now please allow our Lord to blow your mind. Drum roll, please. I don't know what that was, but it's going to be my drum roll. Okay, wait a minute. Actually, first, let's make sure we understand the true biblical meaning of this thing called faith. Now, Hebrews 11.1 1 says this, Faith is the assurance, the confirmation of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Did you hear that? Faith, true faith is not when we believe or put our trust in anything that can be seen, heard, touched, smelt, or tasted. I think I hit all the senses there. True faith is putting absolute trust and being unwavering with your confidence in things we do not sense in this physical world. I didn't say it was easy. And this is where we need to ask ourselves some tough questions. Here it is. What or whom am I currently trusting in to make me happy? I might be getting some people here with the bullseye, but trust me, I'm getting one too. Actually, a few. Are we trusting in a boyfriend or girlfriend? Drugs? Sex? What people think or say about us? How this fallen world actually defines us? Our own human abilities? Come on. Got to be real with ourselves. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, I did promise you a good mind blow. So here it is. Buckle your seatbelts. Hang on to your britches. Faith has absolutely nothing to do with you or me. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's hear that again. Faith has absolutely nothing to do with you or with me. As sinful humans, we are not born with a natural ability to believe. In fact, our flesh, which what I mean by flesh is any of the ungodly desires and ungodly way of thinking, our flesh tells us to believe only in the things that we can see, hear, touch, etc. Y'all know the senses. Listen to this. Romans 3, 11 through 12 says this. None. Come on. None. Yes, I'm talking to you who thinks that you're righteous. None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good. Not even one. If and when you and I try to muster up faith on our own, we will always be discouraged. This is because we are not and never will be the source of faith. And you should take comfort in that, my friends. Listen to Romans 8, 7. Because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God, for it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Okay, don't be freaking out on me now. Because here's the thing, and it should give you some comfort. Faith comes from God alone. Wait, what? Stick with me here as we go back to one of my favorite places, the Word of God. Hebrews 12, 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. little fun fact about that word author in that verse. The literal translation of the word author used here means this, originator, inaugurator. Leader, pioneer, forerunner. Jesus, 
hear this, is the originator of our faith. He is the one who inaugurates it in each one of us. He leads us on the path of faith that he himself pioneered and was the forerunner of while he lived on earth 2,000 years ago. Additionally, come on, Jesus is the perfecter of our faith. He doesn't just place faith in our hearts. Oh, no, 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 no. He brings it to completion and finishes it for, in, and through us. Ephesians 2.8 says this, For it is by grace, which is God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved. You've actually been delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved, gracious gift of God. In this verse, we can clearly see that any source of faith is and never will be found within us. Here's the truth I need you to hear in your heart And man, be excited about it. Faith is something freely given to us by God.